Hello class. In this video, we're going to be learning about Mirage. And what Mirage is, is a library that allows you to quickly spin up a fake API and work with it on the front end. And this can be useful in many scenarios, one of which is, let's say you're working as a dev team and you're the front end developer and the back end developers haven't yet finished the API. You can just use this tool and mock up an API that resembles your application API and has the same data structure. And then once the backend team is done with the API, you can actually just plug and play your frontend app and you don't have to wait for the API to be done. You can also use it yourself even if you're making the project both front and back. And if you wanted to start from the front end, you can actually use this to say finish, for example, your React app before going and doing the actual API. Mirage has a lot of quick tools that facilitate this and uh, is really easy to use actually. So it can save you a lot of time when, uh, when prototyping your app. Okay, so go to miragejs.com and I'm actually not gonna start this tutorial. I think they have a great tutorial, but in my opinion, it's got a lot of markup. And if you're a beginner, actually, even if you're not a beginner, it can be really confusing to use their tutorial because it involves you reading through a lot of markup and a lot of, in my opinion, unnecessary clutter. So let's just click on the read the docs and let's get started. So here if we go to installation, it's just gonna tell us to install this Mirage.js package. But before we do that, let's actually create our, our React app using create React app. So let's say, so I'm here on my desktop, I'm gonna say npx create-react-app and let's call it mirage-tut and let's use the template. So let's say dash dash template and let's use the clean CRA template so that it removes all the unnecessary files and let's let it install. And while it installs, make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't done so. Thanks. All right, our app has been created. So let's say code Mirage Tut. So we can open this in VS Code. Okay, let's open the terminal here and say npm install Mirage.js and do dash uppercase D to save it as a dev dependency. And actually I wanna install Bootstrap as well to give it some styles and make it look presentable without having to write any CSS because that's not the point of this tutorial. So go to getbootstrap.com and copy this npm install bootstrap at next command. And let's go back, let's paste that and let that install. And let's head back to the Mirage docs and let's look at how we can use Mirage. So let's go to overview. So here it shows us how we can create a server, which is this uh, fake server that provides us with our data. And here they have this cool example with movies. So let's copy all of this. So copy all of that and uh, let's go in the source directory and actually close these extra menus. So let's go to the source directory, create a new file, call it server.js, paste everything we copied here. Let me make this code bigger. So here we have this create server call, and then here we have this routes function, and we have this namespace, which what it will does, it will just append this API to the start of our routes, because we're pretending that this is an API. And let's say if your backend had, for example, dash um, or slash v1, you can do this, and it depends on your backend. So you can make it resemble the exact same path as your actual API. So when that's done, you don't need to change anything. And we have this get slash movies, which does exactly that. It returns us this movies, just like a get request on a REST resource endpoint. And the way we can use this, we can save this and then go to index.js and we can simply say import from the same directory slash server. And this alone will actually make it work. So we can go now to app.js and here I'm gonna uh, change this app class to container so that we can constrain the width of our page. And here instead of hello world, let's create another div with a class of row and with the class of justify content center to center stuff in the middle and here i'll put a column so dot call and to show the movies that we just created we have to fetch them first so i'm gonna import use effect and use state from react and here at the top of the app component let's do a use effect call and inside of here Let's do our callback function and here we'll use fetch. So let's say fetch and Mirage hosts this fake API on the same dev server that's serving the React app. So we can simply say slash API slash movies, oops, movies, and that will get us our movies. And here we'll say dot then we get a response. And um, because this is a fetch, we need to return response.json and do another dot then. And here we'll get our JSON data. So here, let's say JSON, and we need to set it to a state in the uh, in this component. So here, let's uh, do use state, use the use state snippet, and here, let's call this movies, and it starts as null. 
So here where we get our JSON, we can simply say set movies, JSON, and this returns it if you see in the, uh, in the server inside of a movies key in the response or property. So here we'll say set movies to JSON dot movies. Oops, movies. And of course, let's do a dot catch in case there's an error and we console, oops, console log that error to the console. And now let's check this out without doing anything. Let's, uh, let's save this and in the terminal, let's say npm start to start this React app. All right, we'll get a blank page. Let's open the dev tools, go to console. And okay, it's requesting it again and again because I forgot to add an empty uh, dependency array for the use effect call. So add this as the second uh, parameter to use effect. And let's refresh. We get this warning. Um, there are multiple modules. Okay, this usually happens when you import the same package in two different places with different casing, but I haven't done that. So I'm just gonna ignore this for now. So there we go. We get this log here that says Mirage get slash API slash movies and we get status code 200. So that was successful. And we get this nice console log where we can expand the response. And there we go. We get movies inside this response object and it has the exact movies that we had. Cool, so that API request actually was successful. So now we just need to show them on our page. So let's go back to our app and here inside this column, let's, uh, let's add a header one that says movies and uh, actually let's give it some style. I'm gonna say, just give it some uh, font weight normal to not be too bold. So FW normal. And here let's say text, oops, text center to center it and then give it some margin on the top and bottom, MY3. And here we'll just say movies. And after this, I'm just gonna use a uh, good old table to show our movies. So here I'm gonna wrap this with an expression as say movies question mark dot length to check. And we do the question mark because it's the optional access thingy because it might not, uh, it might still be null. So we'll say if movies dot length is bigger than zero, let's do a ternary. Then we return the table that has the movies and then else we return something else. I'll do an, the else first and here we'll return. For now we'll say no movies and here we'll do a table with a class of table. Here, let's do our table head. So T head and we'll have the row for the head. And then here we'll have three headings and oops, I was meant to do three. So here, the first one will be the ID. The second will be the name. I was supposed to do tab, but whatever. And the third one will be the year of the movie. And let's do our body here. So we'll do T body and let's loop through our movies. So we'll do movies dot map we can straight away from each movie destructure the uh the fields so here we'll do curly braces id name and year and let's do the arrow and then do in parentheses to return a table row so here let's do our table row and give it a key because this is react let's say id here and here we'll have our tds for the data so the first one actually let's do three so the first one will be the id so do id in curly braces and we'll have the name and we'll have the year. All right, let's save this and return. There we go, we get the table, but it's not styled because I actually forgot to include bootstrap. So let's go to the index.js. So let's import both the CSS and the JS. So let's say import and do bootstrap slash dist slash CSS slash bootstrap dot min dot CSS and duplicate that and replace this with dist slash JS slash bootstrap dot or without .js, just bootstrap. And refresh. Okay, it's uh, complaining that we don't have proper JS installed because bootstrap requires that. So let's copy that and go back to our terminal, open a new one and say npm install at proper JS slash core and let that install. All right, there we go. So we get our movies, Inception, Distella and Dunkirk. I guess the guy that wrote the docs is a big fan of uh, Christopher Nolan because I think all these three were directed by him, but uh, yeah. All right, so now our get request is working. Let's see how we can add a post request that we can create a new movie here. So let's go back to the docs and scroll down. As you can see, it's this easy. We can just add this function, this post uh, endpoint. So copy that and let's go back to our server.js. So here in server.js, we can just paste this. So we have the post movies and then we pass the request body and then we create a random ID and then we return this movie. But the thing is here, it's not actually adding it to these movies, even though it's actually just a fake API. What we can do for now, because there's a better method later, for now we can just copy this object and then just remove that uh, colon and put that in a variable here. So say const or actually let, because that's more appropriate, let movies equals and paste that. 
and this should be still fine it's going to return this movies that's fine and here where we have these attributes which represents this new movie we can add it to the movies array so here we can say movies dot uh, push and push these attributes and then we can return the same response that's fine and for us to be able to interact with it we have to add a form in our markup so here under the uh, header one let's add a div with a class of my4 to have some space between the heading and the table and here let's put a form uh, without an action with an on submit on submit let's call this submit form and create it later and inside the form, we're going to have two fields. Actually, first, let's put a row. Let's have three columns. So dot call times three and tab that. So here, this first one will be an input with a class of form control. That's uh, to give it the bootstrap styling. And here, this will have a placeholder and we'll say name. So this is for the name of the movie. And actually, let's create the state variables first and then continue. So here, let's do another use state uh, snippet call. And this will be name. Oops. Name. So we'll start as an empty string Oops. and here let's say use state again and this will be the year so year will start as an empty string as well and here in this input the value will be name and we'll have an on change and the on change will take an event and then it will set the name to event.target.value close that let's actually duplicate this entire thing and then drag it here onto this actually inside the second column and this will be we'll have a placeholder year and this will be of type number and this will be the value will be year and the uh, on change will set year instead of set name and in the third column we're going to have the submit button so let's do a button of type submit with a class actually can i do this btn yeah actually i could so btn dot btn dash success to give it the green color and then inside the button we'll say create all right save this and let's create this submit form function so here have it as an async function so submit form and it will take the event and inside actually before the try catch block let's say event dot prevent default so it doesn't really load the page and here inside the try block will actually send our request so let's say const res equals await fetch and we'll send a request to the same endpoint slash api slash movies and because this is a post request we have to add some options here so do an object here as the second parameter for fetch and say method is uh, post and also let's add a body of the request and this will be it's actually safe to have some formatting okay it doesn't format it properly but Let's say json.stringify and we'll send the name and the year as the object. So name and year. So we have to close that and close the object. I think there's an extra pair of curly braces. Yeah, cool. And if that's successful, we get the JSON from it. So we'll say const JSON equals await res.json. And now we just need to add it to our list. So we'll say set movies. Do an array, spread the existing movies, and then do comma and add this new movie. So this will be inside of json.movie. And also let's uh, reset the fields. So we'll set name to empty string and also set year to empty string so that those inputs are emptied. All right, let's save and this give this a uh, test. So let's go back to our app. So do I have to refresh? Yeah, okay, just refresh. All right, this is not taking the full width. So maybe uh, let's go here to our columns where we have the input add dash five so they take more than a third and then for this one just add dash two save that looks better open the dev tools just to check and here let's add say let's add for example mad max so mad max the new one fury road okay i can't type road and the year i think it was 2015. all right let's click create and there we go it's actually added to the list and we get this post request 201 which stands for created so that was successful and our inputs were emptied nice now of course the idea that the app you're working on will not have a simple ui like this it will be like your fully fledged app but the idea is that it facilitates interacting with the api even though it doesn't exist because this is just a fake one all right let's add the rest of the routes so we have the full crud functionality and actually okay here there's another feature that mirage has which is pretty cool, which is models. So we can have these models just like we have in our data layer on the server when using an ORM. We can have data models here. 
So we can turn this movie into a model and have some extra features that you'll see. So let's go back to our app and inside of server, let's uh, copy or let's import another thing called model from Mirage.js. And here at the top of our server, we can say models and then open an object. And then we can say movie for our movie model and then give it type model and then do a comma here. And we also have uh, something called seeds, which if you're not familiar with is a way of um, adding fake data when experimenting with your app. So here, so we have the seeds function that we can call, which takes the server and then creates fake data like here these movies. So we can actually just copy this because it has the same data that we copied earlier. So let's go back to our app. So inside of our server, paste this, seeds. So we're doing the exact same, creating these uh, movies, but instead now that will be in this movie model and we can have some more features to work with than just a plain JavaScript array. So we can actually remove this and now we can use this schema object and then access our models using that. So now in our get route, which is here, this, we can actually just copy this get route and then paste that there. And as you can see here, it's using the schema and this will work exactly the same because it's creating these, but this will not work now because it's using that JavaScript uh, array that doesn't exist. So I believe they have all the routes written here. So yeah, here we can just copy these. Actually, we can copy all of them because I'm not gonna do some fancy logic. I, we're just gonna use uh, the base features just to be introduced to it. So let's copy all of these paste them here instead of these two. And now this uh, post request, as you can see now it's using the schema movies and then creating this new movie. And by returning it, it actually returns this newly created movie. Now let's save and make sure that everything works the same. Refresh. And as you refresh, your data is reset to that uh, seeders data. So you don't have to worry about it. If you delete it, you're not gonna have to manually create it again. Let's test creating again. So let's go with Mad Max again, 2015, create. There we go. So that was created and it's automatically given them these incremental IDs, just like you can have like when using SQL. All right, let's uh, consume the other routes. So we can start with deleting. Let me make this a bit smaller so we can add a delete button here in the table in front of every movie. So let's go back to our app.js and here in our table, we can add another table heading and we can say uh, call it actions because we'll have the edit later as well. And here add another table draw. And here, instead of year, we're going to put a delete button. So say button.btn. And um, because this is delete, we're going to say btn dash danger to give it the color red. And this will say delete. When this is clicked, so we'll say on click, we'll call a function. So do a callback, and this will call delete uh, movie. And we need to pass it the ID of the movie so it knows which movie to delete. So let's scroll back up and create this delete movie function. So here, let's do it as an async function. So const delete movie takes an ID. We'll say await fetch from the same endpoint. Actually, not the same. Let's do backticks slash API slash movies slash, and then do dollar sign curly braces to concatenate the ID and add some options and say method is delete. And after this, once that's successful, we need to remove it. So we'll say set movies so we'll remove it from the local state uh set it to movies dot filter and filter movie where movie dot id does not equal this id that was given so it keeps all of them except that one now let's save that and go back to our app so now when we click on delete boom so that was deleted and we get 204 so successful but no content so that was deleted don't know why i clicked on response there's no content in the response data and it was removed because we removed it from our local state. And if we can delete, we can delete all of them until we have no movies. Cool. I'm going to refresh because I like to have some movies. <laughs> all right, let's add the update. And to keep it simple, I'm going to have a update button here. And every time we click on one of them, it's going to fill the fields here with that uh, movie data and then turns this form into an update form instead of a creation form. So let's go back and scroll down where we have our delete button inside the table. Before that, actually, let's duplicate this. And this will be BTN warning to be yellow. And this one clicked will say set movie to update that ID and then change this to update. And what we can do is um, we can store an ID of the movie that is being updated. So here we can do use state again and then say movie ID. 
and have it be null and then do another variable that tells our component that we are in update mode so we'll say use state and here we'll call it updating and this will be false initially because we're not updating initially okay, i made a typo here so updating all right let's create this uh, set movie to update function so here this will be a regular function so set movie to update and this takes the id and then we'll say const const movie equals movies dot find and we'll find the movie where the movie dot id equals this given id and then we'll set updating to true and we'll set movie id to this id or actually to the movie dot id and here we'll say if no movie somehow if that movie doesn't exist anymore we just return and do nothing and under here we'll say set name and we'll set it to this movie.name and also the same for set uh, year to movie.year and let's change that uh, create button to yes yeah, so here where it says create we can do an expression and we'll say if updating so do a ternary and then we'll say update and if we're not updating then we'll say create so let's look at our app all right so let's put some margin between them so where is it actually no it's down so here yeah btn warning let's add some margin on the right so mr3 and let's go back okay i forgot this is bootstrap and now it's changed to me so margin east three cool so now if we click on update here there we go so this changes to update and the movie details are set in these fields for us to update it now let's make it so that when we click update, it actually sends a patch request and updates that movie. Okay, so let's go where the form is being submitted. So submit form here. So now this is for creating a movie. So we can actually just cut all of this and create a separate function here. Call it create movie and paste all of that here. And then here we'll say if updating, then update movie, which we haven't created yet, else it's create movie which is this one right here so let's uh we can just duplicate this actually so duplicate the create movie and rename this to cre uh, update movie rather so here it will be very similar we send uh, a request to the same endpoint but here the method will be patch actually sorry it's not the same endpoint because this is an update so change these with backticks and then do slash dollar sign curly brace and give movie id because that's the current movie that's being edited and the body is the same here we get the response that's the same the only difference is that we don't actually add the movie because it's not the newly created movie we just update uh we just find that movie and edit it so remove this and then uh, here we'll say we'll find the index of that movie so we'll say const index equals movies dot find index of movie where movie dot oops movie dot id equals the movie uh, id that we have and don't be confused this is the index in the array and not the id of the movie because we already have that and now that we have that index we'll say actually we need to make a copy and then and then update the movies because we need to do that for it to be reactive so here we'll say const movies copy equals and then spread the existing movies movies and here we'll simply say movies copy index equals json dot movie and now we set movies to movies copy movies copy like that and we reset the fields and we also uh, set updating again to false and also set the movie id so set movie id to null again all right let's save and uh, check if this is working properly okay let's refresh just in case let's say we want to update dunkirk and just change the year to 2015 and click update all right there we go so now it's 2015 and we got this uh, patch request that was successful to 100 and we got the movie back and we found it in our local state and replaced it cool Let's just create and make sure that it's still working. So let's create another movie. Let's say, hmm, what movie do I like? Uh, yeah, Birdman. Birdman, and I believe that was out in 2013. Hit enter to create. There we go. So the fields are emptied and Birdman was created. And we can delete. Everything still works exactly the same as it was. Cool. So there are some other features as well that are cool that you can use. For example, uh, there's shorthands actually. All of those endpoints, if they're exactly the same as this, 
you can just replace them with these shortcuts. And let's go back to our server, JS, and paste these here. The only issue is that uh, I had issues with post and patch not working because of like some serializer uh, setting, which we'll talk about later. So I'm gonna remove this post and patch and here de remove this delete and remove the two get endpoints and then save and everything should work exactly the same. So refresh, all right, so getting them works. And actually we don't have any UI interaction to test getting a single movie, but it actually works. So here we have delete that works still and also update. And here we add some numbers. Cool, so everything still works even though now the syntax is way shorter. So that's another nice feature if you're just using the basic routes. So let's go back and let's scroll down. So yeah, we talked about seeds, which are called factories where you generate fake data. So let's see, we have, yeah, relationships. So we have model relationships just like we have in a regular ORM. So for example, here they have cast member members of movies. So let's say for every movie you wanted to store the people that worked in the movie and that model you wanted it to be related to that, you can do that here. So let's actually copy this and go back to our server and scroll up and paste that here. I'm actually gonna rename this to just actor instead of uh, cast members. So here, actors. So if you're familiar with any ORM, has many means that this movie has many of the actors and every actor belongs to uh, one movie. Or well, not one movie, belongs to a movie, it can belong to many movies. So now we can create actors and actually add them to these movies. Let's see, do they have some examples of actors? Yeah. So you can straight away create them inside the model itself or you can create them outside, which is what I'm gonna do now because I want us to be able to attach the same actor to multiple movies. So copy these three server create calls and let's go back. So inside the seeds call here, paste that. And instead of just creating them, I wanna put them in variables. So do alt control or alt command and then do two arrows and here say const actor equals. Let's remove those trailing commas. And here, instead of cast member, it's just actually actor, because that's the name of the model that we have. Oh, let's see, we have Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, and Jessica. I don't know who this is. I'm just going to replace this. Okay, who was in Inception? We had, oh yeah, we have Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. Let's see, let's add two more. So in Dunkirk, I know we have uh, Tom Hardy. And actually he's in uh, Inception too, so we can add them to and add him to both. So that would be a nice use case. And we also have, I think Cillian Murphy, I'm pretty sure. I'm blanking on them. So Cillian Murphy in Dunkirk. Let's give them names to say that they don't conflict. So here, let's say Matt and Anne and Leo and Tom and good old Cillian. Who's actually like 50 or something and looks younger than me. All right, so save this and to add them, we can simply inside of this uh, create movie call inside of this object. For example, for Inception, we can just here add actors and add an array. And who do you have Inception? So Leo and Tom. And I'll just copy this and here do comma, oops, comma, paste this. So here in Interstellar, we have uh, Matthew McConaughey and we have Anne Hathaway. And then with Dunkirk, we have Tom. That's fine. We have Tom Hardy and we have Cillian. All right, so now let's save. We can't actually just fetch them because once you fetch the movie, so if we refresh, all right, has many is not defined. Okay, I forgot we have to import these uh, functions. So has many and, oops, I copied the wrong thing. So has many, paste that and also belongs to save. All right, so now if you check, the response actually still will still be the same, which is a good thing because the actors is a different model. And there are multiple ways of including it, but uh, here I don't want to include it. I want to show you how we can fetch them separately. So what I can do is, I don't want to create a different page because that will involve us having to implement something like React Router, but instead we can use a pop-up mo model. So let's go to the Bootstrap docs. So we can just grab a model. So model and go to model. And we can just grab this basic model. So copy this entire div and let's go back to our app.js and Actually, maybe just outside of this row, add it here. This will be hidden, we just need to trigger it. So let's see, how can we have a button? Yeah, we can have a button like this to trigger it like this. So copy that button and we can actually add this button as the uh, second button here because we need to have one for each movie. And this will say, let's say actors 
Let's replace the button to button info and let's give it an on click. So on click, uh, let's give it a function here, call it fetch actors. And of course we need to pass the ID to know which actors to fetch of which movie. And actually I noticed now, even when we refresh, it says no movies briefly and then shows the movies, which is not uh, correct. So what we can do here at the bottom where we have our ternary, here where we have colon, instead of just saying not movies uh, or no movies, we can check if movies is truthy because here we're checking the length and then if that length is not bigger than zero, then we check if movies exists in the first place. And if it exists and the length is not bigger than zero, that means there are no movies. So here we can say, do a paragraph and say no movies. And then here, the another ternary. So here, if we get here, that means in our app, we're definitely loading. So we'll do paragraph here, P loading dot dot save. Okay, fetch actors is not defined. Let's create that first. Let's scroll up and here we can do another async uh, function. Say fetch actors and this takes the ID of the movie and then in the try we'll say const result equals await fetch and then let's do backticks because we need to concatenate stuff. So slash API slash movies slash dollar sign curly brace ID slash actors. And actually we need to add this endpoint now that I think about it. So let's go back to server and scroll down under this delete we'll say this dot get oops, get and slash movies slash and then do colon id to have the parameter and then slash actors and our handler takes the schema and the request and then we have an arrow and here we'll say let movie equals schema dot movies dot find request dot params dot id all right let's return the movie dot actors and simple as that now we get the actors so save and here let's say const json equals await res dot json and actually we need to store these in local variables so let's scroll back up and do another use state call use state and call this actors and have this null at the beginning and let's scroll back down so after we have the JSON response, we can simply say set actors to JSON dot actors. And actually we need to show them in the modal. So let's scroll down where we have uh, pasted our modal. So here modal title, we can just say actors. And here we have some text in the modal body, but instead we'll just do curly braces and say actors and actually do uh, the optional access thing and then say dot map. And for each actor, we're gonna return just a paragraph with uh, the name of the actor. So actor.name. Actually, let's give it a key so the React doesn't complain. So key actor.id. And let's remove the modal footer because we don't need these buttons. So remove these, save. And okay, let's give this a margin. And also it's complaining because uh, somewhere we have class because we copied stuff from Bootstrap. So select this class equals and do control D everywhere and then add a name to it. And let's give this uh, button some margin. So actually, where is it? Yeah, it's here. So this BTN info add another ME3 and save, refresh. Cool, so we get actors and if we click on inception actors, our request was successful. So we get a response and we get our actors, but there's a problem here, class list. Can I read class list of undefined of the model? Okay, this button is targeting the example model ID, but yeah, but our model doesn't have an ID, which is uh, usually it does when I copy it from Bootstrap. So let's add ID uh, example model. Of course, you can rename this to anything. Save and let's uh, now that shouldn't happen. All right, there we go. So we get our model and it's actually fetching the actors and showing them. And I made a typo here. So this should be actors. And let's actually add the class fade so that it kind of uh, comes in slowly, not like jarringly. All right, let's refresh. Cool, so as we click on it, it actually sends the request and loads the actors. Nice. And of course it loads the actors relevant to the movie that we clicked. Because as you can see here, we're fetching for movie one or two or three, depending on the one we click. Nice, so now we're able to use the relationship between the movie and the actor and fetch the actors that are in a specific movie. 
there's a lot more you can do with Mirage. You can do a bunch of things. You can use serializers, which is basically the way you transform your response. Because there are different specifications of how API responses are, are given, uh, different standards to that. And you can get this uh, JSON API serializer. They have a couple of nice API serializers that match popular API uh, standards. And it has this pass through feature, which is a nice feature where, let's say, part of your API com is complete and the other part is not complete and it's actually being served from the same port on your machine locally. Of course, with Create React App, this can't be, but let's say if you're using something like Next.js and your API is being served from the same server that serves Next, that can be a problem. Let's say you have slash movies, but you don't have slash actors in your API. So you can use slash actors with Mirage. And then when you use slash movies, it just, if it doesn't find it in Mirage, it actually goes to the actual API that's on your machine, which is pretty nice and also it has some advanced features like GraphQL which is nice you can have a GraphQL API instead of a REST API for when you're testing your UI and uh, yeah it's a pretty cool library to use for prototyping before your backend is done all right that's it for this one uh, please again make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't done so yet and I will catch you in the next one cheers